How do you look at Cloud Consultant? And today we're going to be covering Cloud Engineering versus Data Engineering. So I myself, I'm a Cloud Engineer, but I do have a side interest in Data Engineering, as you can tell from the channel, tutorials on both. So I thought today it'd be good to cover what are each of these roles, what tools do they use, what money do they make, because that's always an influencing factor for people in tech, or getting into tech. And then what kind of overlap do they have? Is there like a malleability in the roles? Who knows, let's see. So, first things first, the what? Well, for a cloud engineer, cloud engineers are, I'm a cloud consultant, cloud consultant engineer. So I could be working anywhere on this kind of timeline. I can advise clients, design the architecture, build the architecture, operate the services that you've deployed through the architecture and optimize them. Generally, a cloud engineer will be in build operate so for example the build could be using something like terraform and the operate could be that you are an active directory admin or you're going on to you know boxes to do some linux commands linux video coming soon by the way and so essentially here what you're doing is you're enabling services over the internet or the level on services over the internet a data engineer on the other hand don't get them confused with data scientists different roles although Data engineer, kind of like cloud engineer, is not an industry term which is recognized to have a single definition. It can mean a bunch of stuff. And sometimes data engineers do the work of data scientists too. And you can see there's an overlap here. But generally, what data engineers do, data pipeline development, create and imagine data pipelines. So that's like our end-to-end -end project tutorial that you can see on the channel. That is essentially creating a data pipeline with a visualization at the end. Database management. System performance optimization, so ensuring the data infrastructure operates efficiently and scales effectively. The overlap they have with data science, as you can see here, data integration, security, quality. But essentially, you can see that what a data engineer does is they find data somewhere, they collect it together, they change it however it's needed through a pipeline, and they manage the data. And so, an example here of a pipeline is an ETL pipeline, which is extract, transform, load. We'll get to that again in a little bit. But they get sources of data, extract it, put it through some transformation, so changing table names, column names, types of data, whatever it may be. They load it somewhere, it's like a data warehouse, so it can then be used to be analysed. Sometimes the engineer might do the analysation too, but it depends because data scientists are engineer. But generally they don't, but they could, so just read the job descriptions before you start, start applying. So now that we know what they are, what kind of tools do they use to, to deliver this? Well, if we look at Cloud Engineer first, Cloud Engineers, surprise, surprise, Cloud Platforms, AWS, Google, Azure. That's the big ones, mainly AWS and Azure. Google is kind of not really used in industry, generally. So, as a Cloud Engineer, I would use Terraform. This is the code I would use to, or the tool I would use to write the code which provisions the infrastructure. Basically, you write code which then provisions these resources. So I want a virtual machine. You write it in Terraform code, and that's it. Python, you use that for scripting. So you want little things automated, you use that. And generally here, you're wanting a good overview of networking and security. This underpins everything within cloud engineering. So if you think about it, what is the cloud? It's just networking, right? Real Fundamentally, the cloud is just networking because it's just resources somewhere else. It's all computer networking. Security is the cornerstone of networking. So essentially, if you're interested in security and networking, clouds where you need to be. And the kind of things that you have to know about are like topologies, networking, for example, here, hub spoke, network topology in Azure. So it's pretty common topology for enterprises which are leveraging cloud resources. They'll have some sort of deployment like this, architecture like this. So that's the kind of things you'll be looking at as a cloud engineer. As a data engineer, you really need to know about databases, first and foremost. You have to know about SQL and then you have to know about relational, no SQL, blah, blah, blah. This kind of stuff. Structured data, non-structured, whatever it is. On top of that, too, you'll have to know these ETL and ELT processes. That is pixelated right out, but extract, transform, load, or sometimes it's extract, load, and transform. As you can see here, the kind of distinguishing difference is the data on an ETL gets transformed and moved into a warehouse. So you can think of that as it's been brought, packaged, and now it's in a warehouse. The ELT is you're pulling it from source 
into somewhere and this place is normally called a data lake as you can see here it's kind of pixelated out but the data lake is unstructured data so it's not structured the same way it would be for a warehouse so you can imagine it like droplets of water as opposed to boxes now for this kind of process there are standard architectures and patterns to do this for example here's one here in azure so here's another example of this data lake and data warehousing you can see the type of visuals that i'm trying to get you to think about now the types of technologies that they'll use they will use python normally for data analysis and then they'll use things like spark for data transformation additionally the way here i'm saying that you have to know about like architectures for data engineering you need to know more about like the architecture styles for how data is processed specifically for example here is a big data architecture so let's go into the the money piece here right so first and foremost well move me to try and hide some of that the average salary for both of them as you can see here is pretty much exactly the same 3862 3861 because they are both specialized roles and in the uk that's kind of the general general pay bracket for most type of tech jobs so from zero to one year both of these you can see they're pretty similar with cloud engineering actually having higher on the top end as someone who is a cloud engineer i wouldn't agree with that but fair enough you know um 44 average base for zero to one years 40 here it's more like 40 each when you get one to three years you kind of move up to you see it's a 49 average 48 makes sense kind of like 50k after like a good three years and then your 46 years you're moving into the 50 bracket same here as you can see it's just exactly the same for that then 79 years kind of the same except the top end for the engineer is, is higher again i don't know if i would fully agree with this with people that i know who work with data engineers they would say that data engineers who are good make a ton of money if it's like a good cloud engineer you know there's quite a lot of good cloud engineers where it's good the engineer that's hard to find and as you can imagine it's a booming area so it's cloud but data and ai is where the world is kind of going so what's the overlap here if you're in one and you're interested in another i'm re-showing a kind of azure architecture why because as you can see from the way i've presented this information here a lot of data engineering is on the cloud because that's the most efficient way to leverage compute resources to do the amount of data processing that's required and the standard cloud pitch easier to spin up new resources that you require chuck them away so it's all opex operating expenditure not capex capital expenditure when you need a bunch of computers to process a bunch of data you can just get them there and then when you kill them in an hour you only pay for that hour as opposed to if you're trying to do that on prem you'd need to go and get a guy to buy a bunch of computers set them up blah 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 and so that is one of the major overlaps from cloud and data engineering is that cloud engineers engineer the cloud data engineers use resources which are on the cloud so you do have to be cloud savvy for want of a better phrase if you're going to be a data engineer but you then do have to learn a lot of other stuff which you wouldn't if you're a cloud engineer cloud engineer networking security data engineer is data basically data structures etc and i've got a few job postings here because something i've noticed since doing my tutorial oh 1.25k oh but anyway here if we go to this when i made this i kind of followed a guy called darshu so this was two months ago and recently yeah i'd noticed this video popped out and it's got a terraform logo here and it's like the engineering trends for 2025 right which was funny because also when i had been making my videos i created a terraform of this here to here instant data pipeline where i create a terraform file which would just automatically bring up the data factory uh data lake data bricks and synapse and so i thought to myself maybe terraform is going to start to be used in data engineering pipelines and stuff because it would seem silly to leverage click ops which is where you click 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 on the screen when you could use terraform to have a maintainable infrastructure which you update from a code perspective so that it's always maintainable replicable etc so I went and had a look on LinkedIn and yeah, a bunch of them are saying Terraform. So as you can see here, the highlighted ones, data engineer, experience with Terraform, this one, data engineer, cloud technologies, data engineer, 
Terraform, they are infrastructure engineer, so I, that's more of the, the, the kind of overlap. But again, experience with one or more cloud platforms and experience with Terraform or other infrastructure as code tools. So I would say based on this here, if you want to be a cloud engineer, be a cloud engineer. If you want to be a data engineer, be a data engineer. But the fundamental principles here are that things are on the cloud. So no matter what you want to learn, learn the fundamentals of the cloud. If you want to learn about, say, Azure, because that's what I've talked about here, go and check out my video. I've got a 90-minute study cram. You'll be able to pass the fundamentals there. But this isn't a plug to go and buy myself. I'm just saying that cloud is, it's not even the future. It's just what you need to know now to be, you know, anywhere in the tech industry. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, queries, let me know below. And until the next video, take care and I'll see you later.